Hello. Hi. We're live for the Literally Dead Book Club. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I've seen you chatting in the comments already. I'm glad you haven't been like talking about your feelings on the book yet. <laughs> we're gonna get there um while i introduce what's happening you guys i want you to throw your star rating in the comments so we can know right off the bat like how we all felt about this book i'm so already prepared. seeing some pretty low ratings appearing i feel bad about it it's my book club and everyone hated the book i'm sure there will be some positivity in this live yeah. show um hi i'm kayla from books and lala um we're gonna be here for about 30 minutes is my goal for these live shows every single month for the Literally Dead Book Club. This month, well, last month we read Platform 7 by Louise, Louise Dowdy. I've heard her last name pronounced a couple of different times, different ways. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, and I'm talking today with Emma. Feel free to, let me, see, okay, what do I want from you? I want you to introduce, <laughs> well, I just introduced yourself. Introduce your channel. Here, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Tell okay. us your three favorite thrillers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just on the spot so we can get a feel for like, if these people, if anybody doesn't know who you are, this is a good mm -hmm. introduction to your channel and maybe what you talk about. Okay, yeah. And then I'm gonna let Emma describe the book, like the plot so we can, anybody who's here who maybe hasn't read it and is just here for fun, you know what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I can try. Um, okay, so I'm Emma from Drinking By My Shelf. Three favorite thrillers. Um, I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. That has like one of the best twists I've ever read. Oh my God, I didn't realize you loved that so much. Oh my God, I love it so much. Um, I really love Anything You Do Say by Gillian McAllister. Anyone's read that? It's like a sliding doors, but a thriller, not a romance. And it's really, really good. Um, and oh, we have a thriller. I love so many. Maybe a recent one would be Miracle Creek, but I don't know if that is not really a thriller but it's like, it's page turning and it's like a crime story. There's like a more literary one. So you go, yeah, for those sure. are three, three faves. And then the book. Okay, so where to start with this book? This was, what it said on the back was that it was gonna be about um, two suicides on the same platform on a train station in Peterborough, I think it was. Um, and it's told from the perspective of the first woman who died. So she's now a ghost and there's gonna be some connection. But the book wasn't actually about that at all. It was just kind of about, it was like the chunk, the main chunk of the book was actually a story about um, a woman with a emotionally abusive boyfriend. Um, and that was, a, I mean, that was an interesting and sad story to read definitely, but it was framed with like being told from the perspective of a ghost who was kind of like solving a crime, kind solving of. a crime, but also like falling in love with this random guy on the, at the train station for no real reason. It was a lot going on. Those are the kind of main points. Oh, perfect. So, so yeah, I think um, not only was the plot different, but uh, the genre was different. Mm -hmm. And I feel I can't feel bad because you all voted for this book, so it's not my fault. It's not yeah. Emma's fault. <laughs> um, but I do feel a little bad that the second book of this book club was not a thriller. This was not a thriller. This was not a mystery. This was not horror. I don't know how I would describe this. Um, oh, man. How would you describe this? It's just kind of like a dark domestic drama. Can we call it a drama? Yeah, I'd say more. Like there are parts of it that that fit into the kind of domestic thriller genre, but overall it it wasn't what you would expect from that. Yeah, so the big I guess the big mystery here is who how she died. Yeah. So um I think I'm gonna talk about, we wanna talk about a couple of things throughout this, but here's some things to think about that we're gonna talk about. I wanna talk about um, characters we liked, characters we didn't like, see maybe our favorite part leads her apart. Um, if the mystery of like her actual death we felt satisfied by, if there was any plot twists we liked, plot twists we didn't, um, and that kind of stuff, just so everyone's prepared for kind of what I want to talk about. And any questions that you guys have, I can pop up on the screen and we can discuss more in depth. Um, so 
I kind of want to know what initially intrigued you about this book, because this was um, one of yours, Emma, that mm -hmm. you added yeah. to the list. And I want to know, like, have you read from her before? What intrigued you about this one particularly? Yeah. So that was the reason is because I've read one book by her before, which okay. was called Apple Tree Yard and was genuinely brilliant. Actually, I should have mentioned that. That's one of the best thrillers I've read. So that was definitely a thriller. Um, it's definitely, it's like a court case mystery oh. and it's really really compelling and it's really feminist and it like really took me by surprise so that's why I was like intrigued by that author and then the fact that this book looked like it was going to be more horror and like actually have supernatural elements right intrigued me like because I wouldn't have expected that from that author hmm. I would love to know from you guys in the comments would you read from her again are you interested in reading another book from her um and it, like her, because her overall writing to me, like I didn't dislike. No. I wasn't like there are flaws or this doesn't make sense. I just, I didn't like the story. One of the things that I actually wrote down while I was reading it, because I do think she's a great writer and I really, even people who hated this book, I would really recommend Apple Tree Yard. That's the only one I can recommend. Mm -hmm. But I wrote down that it felt like the, the problem wasn't with the writing. It wasn't even with the author. It was almost like the book needed an editor. I mean, I'm sure it had an editor, but right. uh, it felt like the editor had, there was a lot of potential for them to rearrange the way the story was told and the order things were presented. Like, I think it had a lot of potential in there to be this really good story and then the parts just didn't come together. And to me, that's kind of more like an editor's job is to like take those elements and piece them together differently. Yeah, I do think this book was overall too long for me. Yeah, And I'm not usually someone who's like, oh, I need it wrapped up in 350 pages. But I think you could have accomplished the same story with less time. I found that overall, like the plot meandered too much. Um, and a lot of things that I didn't really care about, or I don't think really brought much more to the story. Um, the reason I was interested in this, so... Um, just so you guys know the process of like choosing books. So like I have a, I have a co-host and like I'll maybe list like 10 books that I'd be interested in. And they list 10 books they'd be interested in or 20 books or 30 books. And then we each like, I picked five from Emma's and she picked five from mine. And then that went to the final vote. So as soon as she mentioned this, I got really excited about it because um, I like books that have a speculative or supernatural element. But what I've learned from this is that I actually prefer uh, books that are a little more ambiguous about it and books that um, pitch themselves as like, maybe it's paranormal. Like, is this house really haunted? Are yeah. we reading from an actual ghost? And I would have preferred uh, like to find out that it was a ghost like throughout the book or something yeah. like that. Yeah, those are my favorites as well, where it's like there's a there are two explanations and you have to decide which one you believe. Yeah. So I hope that in the future, maybe I can find something for the book club that's more um, on that level, because I do see having everybody shared their ratings that this this one was not it. This didn't work yeah. for everybody. Um, we haven't shared our ratings. I gave it a two. You are two. Okay. So interestingly, I actually gave it a three um, because I, I didn't I didn't dislike it. Once I kind of got my head around the fact that it wasn't the genre I was hoping it was going to be, um, there were parts of it I liked. So the main chunk of it is the story of this woman with this emotionally abusive boyfriend. Um, and that story in itself, I was interested in reading. Like I found that really compelling. I thought that like he was a very convincing and very terrifying character. So I gave it a three because of that rather than a two, even though the bit where we were hearing from her being a ghost, I just like could not be bothered with. And also like, it felt like there were so many different books going on in there and I mm -hmm. potentially liked each book. So in the sections when we're not in her flashback. We meet so many different characters who all work at the train station and we go into their lives. And like, she wrote the characters well. They were interesting, well fleshed out characters. I was just like, what are you doing in my book? What do you have to do with this story? I don't know why we're spending so much time learning about each person. So yeah, it was a three because they kept being bits that I was interested in, but overall, it, I don't know what it was. Yeah, I definitely get that. I. I was leaning more towards a three as well, but <clears throat> it's, the thing is, so this wasn't the mystery thriller horror book that I was expecting. It was more of like a domestic drama 
which is fine. Like, even if it's not what you went into expecting, maybe you can still appreciate what it was. But for me, that's not something I would ever read normally anyway. Like, that's just not a book that I would go out of my way to pick up is reading about an emotionally abusive relationship for like 400 pages. Um, I do think the audiobook had a bit of an impact on my rating as well, because I listened to it in one day, which was a mistake. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was basically just like being um, verbally attacked for my entire day. Because a lot, of, a lot of the book is just her boyfriend. What's her boyfriend's name? Matthew? Matthew. Um, it's, it's just him gaslighting her and um, just telling her all the things that are terrible about her and making her feel guilty and making her feel bad. And I don't think the audiobook was a very enjoyable experience because even if I can appreciate the character development and uh, the realistic portrayal of abuse, I just, it was a lot to listen to. So I wish yeah. I had, I wish I had read it with my eyeballs. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. I started listening to the audiobook. I didn't even get to the flashback sections in the audiobook, but I found it a very boring experience on mm -hmm. audio because the first like 45 minutes, it felt like she was just describing the train timetable. And I was oh, like, yeah. I kept, I got to the point where I was looking and I was like, am I listening to a book or have I just tuned into the late, to the Peterborough train time table? Because I don't know why she's still talking about this. <laughs> and then I had to switch to reading it so that I could skim because there was a lot of stuff that needed skimming. Um, okay, talking about the characters, somebody just said uh -huh. Matthew can choke, which is my favorite thing. Okay. Um, awesome. All right, favorite and least favorite characters. Oh, now I can't remember the different people. Um, the what's he called? Lockhart, the um, yeah, something the the like young detective PC. who was really interested. Yeah, PC Lockhart, I think was his right. name. I liked him. I liked that he got interested. Thing is, I think I'm mixing up the characters because there were so many. I'm getting pieces of each of them, but I'm pretty certain it was that guy, the one who like decided to get interested in her case and didn't want to wanted to find justice for her. I thought he was good. And I also quite liked, even though he was like super old fashioned, the older detective who was like weirdly proud of the young detective. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I quite liked that dynamic. I liked um I liked Delmar. Yeah. He, Is he the guy who works, the like security yeah. guy. And like we got some scenes of him like back in his apartment and like dealing with um racism at one point and there was some interesting like dynamics with his character and then I was like and then it was gone and it was over and we went to so many so many different characters which I yeah. normally like but there were so many characters I felt like were kind of weak um yeah. and I wanted more development with the ones that I did like so when it left like Delmar's situation I was like oh I wish we could go back and delve more into yeah especially stuff. because they had like he had this really traumatic past from like how he'd come over to the country and you kind of get that like shoehorned into this one scene and then just moved on and it was like this feels like something I want to delve into yeah and usually when a when a thriller not that this was a thriller, but usually when a mystery or thriller introduces like 20 characters, it's for the goal of like confusing you or, mm -hmm. you know, creating red herrings. So you think like, oh, is this person connected to this death? And for me, I was trying to make all of these people in my head connected to one of the deaths because they're, correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe I'm forgetting, but the whole mystery of there's two different deaths that are 18 months apart, those weren't connected in any way. No. Right? So there was no, no actual, like, reason. Obviously, the second death is the catalyst for her discovering what happened to her, but there was no connection between those two. And I kept creating them in my head. I was like, this has to be a mystery. Same, At one because point, that this was like has to be a thriller. Yeah. And, like, the way it was pitched was that there was going to be a connection. And even there was, like, a point where her ghost talks to his ghost right. and she's like she even talks about something that they have in common but I she was like oh I realize what we have in common but then it never explains and I don't really understand I don't know if what she means is like what we have in common is that we're both ghosts so I just I didn't get it yeah so I was a little frustrated by that because I thought there was going to be all these different characters 
but that's my thing with thrillers is I usually read such like um over the top thriller sometimes or like unrealistic so I was like okay Matthew's not really a doctor Matthew's hiding yeah. the secret past Matthew killed the first guy Matthew 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 because the whole book was so focused on Matthew and then I was like oh no it's just it's just a, a really sad and story. sad story exactly yeah yeah it was definitely sad rather than scary I mean it was scary imagining being in that situation but sure. it wasn't like thrillers I think you can absolutely have thrillers about sad things that happen but like they should be entertaining that's they should be like entertaining and exciting and page turning and this was just like a very sad story that we were diving into this woman's life which is fine and that's that's a very valuable story to tell but For sure. not when you're adding in ghosts and stuff it was like pick one yeah I wanted uh I wanted suspense mm. and I didn't I didn't get that um so Tell me something you liked about the book and something you hated about the book. Okay, so hang on, I'm gonna just take out my notes that I wrote down. Um, I the, the things that I liked were, um, they were just like that there were little moments. I liked that in some of the various characters sections, we got to hear about different people's experiences. So mm -hmm. like you said, like hearing a bit about um, Delmar experiencing racism and, um, she she went on a few little like feminist tangents, which I enjoyed. I always enjoy reading those in books. So mm -hmm. it was like there was definitely some really good diving into people's characters and experiences, which is what I liked about it. Um, but what I hated about it was the book as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. Yeah, and also her the fact that she like fell in love with that random guy on the train platform, I really couldn't deal with. She suddenly, for no reason, as a ghost, fell in love with this guy and started like, she was like following her around being like, oh, I love you, I love you. And I wrote like, why is she being a horny ghost? And I couldn't do it. <laughs> that was the first thing you, um, I think you messaged me. You were, yeah. I, I hadn't started yet. And I was like, what do you think? And you were like, well, it's about a horny ghost. And I don't know. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything I liked right now. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, I. I do also agree with the the more um, feminist or societal commentary that she had was interesting, mm. which I find interesting because I just read an interview with the author and she went on this tangent in the interview about how she hates um, chiclet and girly books. And I was like, mm, are you okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a little weird. Um, what I didn't like, you know what I didn't like? I, I think when a book has like a paranormal or supernatural element um that's enough of breaking the rules of reality that I then need there to be rules at least within that portion so mm -hmm. like it was enough for me that like she's a ghost she's in purgatory which is something like outside of the realm of reality that I needed there to be rules for her purgatory so the fact that she could hear other people's thoughts but then sometimes not and then mm. she couldn't leave the train platform and then somehow suddenly she could. could. And then what else was there? There was a couple other things um, that everything just felt really convenient. I don't yeah. know. Like I the way that other spirits worked as well was really inconsistent. Like some of them were people like her and some of them were just like images that were stuck. And then one was just like a gray cloud. Yeah, that blurry. I was like, yeah. what's happening? It was so weird. I'm sure there's reasons for all these things. Like if you, if I really wanted to take the time, I could, like, I appreciate. Um, if we really like thought about all of these things and really, you know, I could write an essay about this and figure out yeah. like the reasonings behind everything that she did. But to me, it just felt like she didn't have a clear idea of what she wanted to write. And so it yeah. just like went everywhere. So yeah. your whole original idea of like, this needed an editor, I'm just reiterating that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that was it, which is frustrating because I feel like almost if it had changed a few things, it could have ended up a really interesting book because it it's a cool and unusual idea. So I just like want someone else to do it. Yeah. Have you ever read a book like this with like this type of perspective? I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure I've read books from the perspective of a ghost. Well, I mean, I've read um, The Lovely Bones. That was like from a, the perspective of a dead person. For sure. 
but and then not, um, like this. If I stay, it kind of reminded me of it because it's like that. Mm. Um, she was in a coma, but it was like a, so it wasn't purgatory. But I also thought of this one. Um, th if you guys liked this book, I know we're kind of shitting on a lot of the things in here, but I know quite a few of you. I did see like some five stars. Um, if yeah, you like I want to hear the good things. I would also recommend I Stop Somewhere by T.E. Carter. This is YA. Um, and it is a little more thrilling. So if you really liked Platform 7, I would recommend this one, which I also okay. didn't love. So. Oh, okay. But if you loved either of those, I think this would be uh, good recommendations. I we need to scroll back and see what other people loved about yeah, it. Yeah, because I definitely saw some people on Instagram said it was five stars. I'd love to know what they thought. It, was, it felt like a first draft that needed more direction, yeah. I don't remember what the gray blur was. Is that true? The gray, yeah, the gray blur was Matthew. Oh, so wow. at the end, it was like, this is just like total spoilers. It's, it's okay, right? Yeah, we're yeah. there. So it was like he, you see his future where he um, like is being abusive again to his future wife. And then he nearly jumps off the car park, but doesn't because somebody like stops him and rescues him. So the gray blur is just like his ominous presence in the car park which made no sense because it's not like he even died in the car park. It was right. just like, why wouldn't his ominous gray blur be everywhere he'd ever been? Why would it be in the car park? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Um, okay. I guess let's talk about um, Lisa's death then mm -hmm. because I'd love to know how you all feel about it. Um, and I, okay, I want to know what you thought the result was going to be and like at what point you assumed because I guess the options were like she killed herself um, or somebody pushed her or she accidentally died. So I want to know like what you thought it was going to be and at what point um, maybe you guessed it right because a big part of the enjoyment of a mystery for me is guessing Mm. And I don't care if I'm right, but I wanna I wanna have the ability to like guess all these different things. And I feel like I thought the ending and her actual death was too much on the nose of what I thought. Oh, okay. I didn't guess anything because there weren't I didn't feel like there were clues. I agree with you. Like I like being able to guess whether or not I'm right. And it just wasn't really framed like this mystery with clues that we could puzzle out. So then when it happened, it just felt like, again, it just felt sad. It was just like, this was a sad story that could have happened to somebody. And it wasn't like a straightforward like villain who was chasing her. It was just like, wow, that's anticlimactic and sad. Um, so I, I thought that the book was a, like, since it was so focused on the abuse of Matthew, I kind of assumed that it was a little too heavy handed implying that he was going to be the one that killed her, that she probably just like um, took her own life. But I had a feeling it was going to be like accidental, which is what mm -hmm. happened. Um, yeah. because, but I only guess that because it's happened a lot. I've actually read this scenario in quite a few books in the last couple of years where um, where like the, de the death at the end is like an accidental death. And so I just kind of guessed it from early on just by like how um, her relationship was being portrayed. And I was like, it's too easy. I think she's delving uh, so much into Matthew's character to find out like his background and his motives for things that she's not just gonna make it as easy as like he was the bad guy because I think part of her intent was um, not to excuse abuse in any way, but to like give characters layers. Yeah. So um, what happened at the end was, what happened at the end? She was like on the, how did she get on the train tracks to begin with? She, yeah. So she was trying to run away from him in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And then he was coming after her and she, I can't remember why she thought she'd get, she was going to go to the train station anyway. She was just running. I think the thing is at that point, like, it was because he'd been gaslighting her so much, she was like losing her grip on reality a little bit. So it's kind of reflecting the way it was written. It became a bit confusing because she was just a bit like, I need to get out of this situation. So she was just running away from him and then just stepped onto the 
train track. Yeah, but I feel like she was on the train track for a while before she got hit. And it, like, yeah. how, did you not hear the train coming? I was confused in was that confused way. That. Yeah, because it kind of described her as, like, she was standing at the, the gap in the fence, ready to cross. Mm -hmm. And then was like, okay, I'm going to cross. And then stepped and got hit. Which, to me, makes no sense. Because I have never in my life <laughs> been that close to a train without hearing the train. Trains right. are very loud. Yeah, but I guess it's just like you're right about her not completely being um, present and aware. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense. I was, I did think it was a like a really dark little twist, the fact that Matthew didn't kill her, but he did deliberately make it look like she had killed herself, like by um, taking the right, note the out note. and placing the note and stuff. I thought that was like really dark and evil. Yeah. He was a very, um, obviously awful character, but I'm glad he got some like layers to him. Um, yeah. It was, he was interesting to read. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's like my favorite character, but at least he wasn't just, I don't know. It, it could have been a little less deep, his character, you know? Yeah. I d and I think that's why I gave the book a three rather than a two is because the characters did, they all felt real. Mm-hmm. And like human, even if he was awful, he still felt like a human. Did you oh. get layers? Those seems like a textbook gaslighter. Yeah, I mean, he was awful. Yeah, I said in my review, I was like, "This is you should recommend this to like the toxic man in your life." Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> this is you. <laughs> men who don't understand what gaslighting is. Like, it was yeah. a very realistic portrayal of that. Yeah. Do you guys have any, we have like five minutes left. Do you guys have any questions or things you want us to touch on? Let me know. Were there any other like twists in the book that you liked? I, okay, here's the thing. I wrote down this twist, but I can't remember what the twist is. But I wrote <laughs> down the, the, the connection. So if you guys haven't read the book, okay. So we've got the death, we've got the death. And then we've got this person that um, Lisa is like in love with at the train station. His name was... Caleb. Caleb. Well, that wasn't his real name, though. No. Hang I think on. it was I Andrew? Andrew, yeah. Okay. But he, how was he connected to the death? He was the son of the original death. Okay. Right. Yeah. I couldn't Which remember. Maybe I wrote, is why. And maybe, yeah. that was, maybe that, like, wasn't clear, and then it was revealed, because I wrote it down as, like, the only twist in the book. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I think that's what it was. When she's speaks to the ghost of the first guy he suddenly he felt like a, I know he's a ghost but he felt like a character who didn't feel realistic so he was supposed to be like an abusive father and he like he's just been a ghost who hasn't spoken and then he had like three actual lines in it which is when she goes over to talk to him and he instantly is like being creepy to her and hitting on her and I was just like it felt like it was just a way of being like look flag this guy's creepy Right. But, like, creepy guys don't go around making it obvious they're creepy. That's why they're so scary. But maybe because he was a ghost, he was just being an exaggerated version of himself. I don't know the rules of ghosts in this book. Oh, no. I feel like I'm lagging a little. I hope it's not glitching for anybody. I can't see the comments anymore. My internet's, like, busted Oh, no, up. really? Yeah. <laughs> if you see anything you want to, like, um comment on the head oh people are talking about the hedgehog and i now don't remember the hedgehog i don't remember a hedgehog at all i hope the hedgehog is okay best character in the book i don't remember the oh, hedgehog no <laughs> me neither the thing that i found um that i think i'm going to continue to find with this book club is that um i find mystery and thriller books really difficult to remember any of after like a month so yeah. I, need, I definitely need to remember to finish these books a little closer to the live show because I just like their thrillers in general aren't particularly memorable to me. Yeah. Um, they're not books that like when people ask me my favorite thrillers, I can pull them. But so a lot of times I can't pull like my favorite plot points or my favorite characters. And I just I forget a lot of things. So 
I agree. I mean, I get that a lot with books in general, to be honest. I'll be like, oh, I, I loved it. It was five stars and I can't remember anything about it. But thrillers definitely in particular. Because I guess you usually read them faster and it's more about being like really in it. And then it, afterwards it's just gone. Yeah, like even with um, I Let You Go, which is one of my all-time favorite thrillers, yeah. I can't tell you much of the plot. I can tell you the plot no. twist. Yeah, I, I can tell you the twist. Favorite thing. <laughs> I can't tell you the characters' names. I don't oh, know. No. I forget no. so much. I never know characters' names. I can't remember the character's name from Platform 7, the main character. <laughs> Lisa. No idea. Lisa. Okay. Oh, yeah. I you haven't said that in this video. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask me a month from now. I'm going to know nothing about this yeah. book. Be like, oh, yeah. it's about a ghost. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't know why my comments aren't loading properly. I'm sad. Um, okay. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. I really enjoyed, even though, I don't know, even though it was like a poorly rated book by most of us, I think um, Emma was saying earlier, this it makes for a more interesting discussion. Because yeah. like if, if we all just gave it four stars, it'd be like, I liked it. I like this. I like this. I like this. So at least there's some um, good comments here. Yeah. So, and I, did, I enjoyed reading it. I enjoyed reading it and making notes about the things I didn't like. I did not, but <laughs> I, had a, I had a good time scrolling through the Goodreads. If you guys have yeah. not joined the Goodreads group, um, I actually really relied on that to remind me of a lot of things that happened in it. And I separate uh, the book club books by like sections. So it's like read up to page 100 and then come here and chat about it. So I thought that was really fun. So come join the Goodreads group if you haven't already. Check out Emma, who will be linked. I think she's already linked in the bio and uh, our description. And next month, we're talking about You Are Not Alone by Gru Hendrix mm, and Sarah I Pepper. have already read. Have you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, can you tell us your rating? Um, <laughs> so I work for the publishing company. Oh, yes. So I, I'm not gonna talk about it right now. <laughs> but I'll talk to you about it. <laughs> it was an interesting read, I'm guessing. And I hope you hop into the comments on the live show so we can chat about it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching and I will see Thanks, you guys. next month. Bye. Bye.